Hello and welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2. In this video I'm going to be talking about and reviewing the film from 2016 directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa from Japan, Creepy. This is a, what would you call it, uh, a murder mystery thriller movie. Uh, and this is one I was really looking forward to based on the actors involved, particularly the, the guy who plays uh, the the kind of the, the prime suspect in the story. I don't know if his uh, his actual name is on the back. Yes, Teriyuki Kagawa. Uh, he was in Tokyo Sonata, another Kiyoshi Kurosawa film, no relation to Akira Kurosawa, that I uh, watched from the Massive Cinema Collection. This is another Massive Cinema release. Uh, very nice package indeed. And the film itself, uh, I watched about a month or, or two ago and really, really enjoyed it and thought I'd include it as part of this Asian cinema season because uh, I watched it, uh, me and Connie watched it actually, and uh, really enjoyed it quite a bit. So the story is about this detective who at the beginning of the movie um, has a bit of an incident at the police station where um, someone gets hurt basically. Uh, he kind of drops the ball a little bit and he feels responsible so he decides to step away from being a detective. Uh, he moves out to a suburb with his wife and they try to live a normal life. Uh, only his neighbor um, seems to be quite the eccentric character. They try to go over and be nice neighbors and kind of give them a gift, but his neighbor is very standoffish and odd, and this is the character played by Teruyuki Kagawa. And uh, he's a very interesting person, uh, this actor who plays the character. Like, his face is very strange, and it lends itself very well to a creepy-looking guy. So the thing I, th I think that perhaps... I don't know if I'd call it a spoiler... Uh, I don't want to get into that too early in the video or anything, but the thing that I think maybe works against the film, or maybe is a strength, is the fact that we kind of get the reveal of, of who this, this, this prime suspect is fairly early in the film, maybe halfway through. And so when you're wondering, is it this guy, is it someone else, you get that answered fairly early on, compared to most films that deal with a murder mystery and kind of a whodunit kind of thing. Um, but what we do is we follow this detective who is now teaching, uh, I guess, criminal psychology and, and kind of you know, lending his experience and expertise in the field of being a police detective, a murder detective, in fact, uh, to people learning to, to kind of take on the same job that he once did. And there's a guy there who's very enthusiastic and asks him about this uh, unsolved case about a family who went missing. And so this detective finds himself getting dragged back into this, this old case and begins to investigate. And there's a really great scene when they bring in this woman uh, who's the daughter of the family, actually, who survived, uh, or, you know, didn't really have anything to say. Like, it's a complete mystery. They don't know what happened to this family. And this daughter doesn't like to really talk about it, but they bring her in for questioning. And as they're questioning her, she's, she's kind of walking around the office, and the, where they work is like this complete kind of glass structure, so it's very bright, but the it gets really dark as she's talking. And so there's a kind of cool kind of visual aesthetic to that scene that really just draws you into the emotions of this woman as she's talking about the things she does remember um, because she can't seem to really remember much at all about what happened and why her family disappeared and there comes a point where you think that the guy who lives next door to this former detective might have been involved in this disappearance of this family and then other things start to happen in the immediate present of the characters in the film so I, I thought that the, the actor who played the, we'll just call him the creepy guy, was fantastic. Very good at playing this unsettling character that you're very unsure of what, what his motivations are uh, in life. You know, just a very oddball character. We, there are other neighbors as well, but it's really more about this guy and the mystery of the even the, the young girl he's living with. You know, is, is she really his daughter? Like, There's lots of, of mysterious elements to the film. I think it loses credibility towards the end when... The plot is kind of laid bare a bit more, and you kind of find out what has been happening. And I just think that, you know, it's a little bit unbelievable. You know, you would think that the person who is the perpetrator, the person who is behind the, this disappearance, uh, you'd think that he would have been found out much easier. Well, not even much easier, because he doesn't get found out at all, um, you know, at least in the in the present timeline of the film. What happens at the end is, is what happens at the end, but... You know, he's seem, he seemingly gotten away with a lot of stuff over a long period of time, and it just seems very unrealistic that he might have got away with it. But the the actor who plays the, the neighbor, the creepy neighbor, really deserves a, a, a real standout mention. Just the way he moves, the way he walks, 
is unsettling. Like he really transforms himself in a in a very subtle way, actually. Like just the way that he he walks, the way his shoulders, just lots of little intriguing uh, little beats physically that sell the character more than just what he's saying as well, and the the way he acts awkward socially. It's the way that he moves as well. And it doesn't feel like an actor who's trying to be over the top and to try and seem like a weird guy. It feels like an actual weird guy and you're really unsettled by it and uh, and wondering if he really does figure into everything. So, like I said, about halfway through the film, roughly, you do find out who's behind everything. And that kind of lets the tension out just a little bit. But now you're just wondering how he's he's able to do the things he's able to do. And that's another part where I felt like it was a little bit too uh, unrealistic as well, I have to say. And then the end of the film is a really interesting uh, finale. The last 10 minutes or so, you really think that it's going one way. And uh, I was kind of really disappointed. But it went a different direction, which I was really happy with. I think like, the conclusion was the right conclusion for the film. Um, But overall, I thought it was actually a really good um, murder mystery thriller. Nothing spectacular. Like I said, there are some kind of uh, leaps of faith you have to take as an audience member. But there there are some truly kind of harrowing ideas in the film. Not very graphic or anything, but just the... um, It's rated 15. Some violence and gruesome images. I mean, yeah, it, it gets a bit intense, but it's nothing ridiculous. But... I would highly recommend the film if you're into murder mystery movies and kind of uh, police detectives and kind of you know, missing people and kind of a, a serial killer perhaps. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, would definitely watch it again, probably not for another maybe five to ten years if I'm being completely honest, but uh, I, I did really like it and the, the actor who plays the creepy neighbor is by far the standout of the film, uh, Teriyuki Kagawa. But there's a really good cast in general and... Um, you know, it, it kind of, it, it delves with, you know, kind of the Japanese horror stuff, but also kind of, it feels very much like an American film, like a, an American thriller, uh, which it actually says in the back, which kind of reminded me of how I felt when I was watching the film. I felt like this feels like a very, like, american influence kind of um, story. The way that, just the way that it's it's shot and edited and put together, it felt uh, very Western in that sense. Anyway. Creepy, really enjoyed it. I, I really do like Kiyoshi Kurosawa. I know that his more famous work is from the 90s, the horror stuff that he did. Whereas all I've seen is like a family drama, Tokyo Sonata, and this one, which is more of like a you know, thriller. So I'm intrigued to go back and see his other movies from his more prolific period, where I believe he really made his name with films like Pulse and Cure, both of which I own and have yet to get to, and maybe I will, and I'll talk about them in Asian Cinema Season 2. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you, cause...